Introduce you. Go ahead and okay. introduce yourself. Okay, uh, I'm Maria Delgado. And I'm 26 years old by now. I'm a basketball player, a pro basketball player. And I met Arnold when he was playing at my hometown team, the pro team, Bucaros. And man, I, I was at that point like in my life when that year everything changed. And mm. I, I gotta tell you, you inspired me. Me? Most of, uh, a lot of players that uh, passed through, through Bucaros, mm -hmm. I grew up like looking at them and just thinking to myself, like, man, I want this life. I want to do mm -hmm. this. I want to do this. And you encouraged me because I, I was at 18 years old, 19 years old, before I go to the States to start my college career. Mm -hmm. And you speak to me, and I, I, I guess, like, you, you have seen me, like, my growing. Yeah, I mean, so it's been I'm a... so happy that you invite me. I'm so happy that of you course. Me, hey, let's do this. Of and course, of course. Yeah, man, of course. It's been... I know when the first time I saw you, I was like, yo, she's good. Like, hands down. <laughs> you know, I'm like, dang, she's good. Everybody knows, like, yeah, yeah, that's funny. She's good. She's, she's real good. And just to see how far you've come, you know, we're going to get into that. I was going to save that, you know, with your mom and that whole situation. I, I already know, you know, I remember... Mm -hmm. I can't. We'll get to that later. But first, I want to know what does the six twenty two means? I see it everywhere. Tell me about that okay. first. That's my first question. What's that about? Okay, uh, six twenty two uh, is my my brand, my clothes, brand, my mm -hmm. brand in general. Mm -hmm. uh, what it means? Uh, number six and number twenty two has been my numbers for the last I, for my my whole my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like number six was was always my number. But you know. In college, they are, they only go from zero to five. So when I got to to any of my junior college, my first junior college, my first year of college, uh, they assigned me number twenty two. Mm -hmm. So I took it. I mean, I was so amazed by by the experience I was living, and I didn't even care about that number. I just took it and I said, "That's my new number. How it, that's gonna be? I take it." Mm -hmm. Years later, like on the pandemic. Um, I've been doing this Christmas activity with the children for seven years now, mm -hmm. and when I I tried to do a Christmas party for 250, 300 kids. Wow! Um, I've been doing this for seven years with with friends, with another like um, foundation that they wanna be part of this, and every year is just getting better and better. So when I was in the pandemic, I say like, I want to do more stuff like this, not only in December. Right. I want to help more kids. I want to, not only for birthday parties and stuff, but I really want to make an impact on, on this community. So I just think I need, I need to create like something bigger than, than myself. Right. So I, I talk about the brand and I start to create my, my design and my, my mission, my vision all the mm. goals that I wanted to do with, with it. And it just appeared. Delgado Suarez, it, it's like this, you know? This is the logo. Uh -huh. So I'm going to explain because uh, Delgado Suarez are my last names. Yeah, y'all have like four yeah. names. So, <laughs> yeah. Trust me, Latinos. I know. <laughs> Latinos. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so, uh, Delgado, I, I switched the G for the number six. Uh, okay. And I replaced the S and the C of Me my too. Suarez, second last name for 22. So, it's, nice. very, it's easier to remember as 622. Nice. That's the, the logo, too, also. Oh, okay, nice. I've been seeing and it. You know. With the years, like, for, I, I see this project as now, like, my, like, the thing I, like, my, how you say, like, I want the, I want to keep going with this, like, after basketball. Of course. I want it to be, like, my, my own. Your brand. Yeah, it's my true. brand, my, my work after this, my, my yeah, resource after basketball. It's like your legacy. It's like I your mean, legacy. Yeah. 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 I feel like that's important for many players when you start off playing. 
it's like don't only think of basketball just while you're playing you know what do you can take from it like what legacy as you could say that you can you can create for yourself after the game because there's a lot of players that when they're done there is nothing else you know they don't have nothing mm-hmm. like you know me guys retire and you don't even know and they've been playing 10 15 years whatever but they don't create nothing while they're in the game to carry on mm-hmm. You know, that's why I created this um, whole podcast and this is a part of my legacy because for me, I always feel like I went through so much craziness playing basketball myself, you know, starting off in Colombia and like that Mm -hmm. whole season, (laughs) that whole season. season. I know things have changed. I know yes. things have changed. I'm pretty yeah. sure you know a little bit of here and there of this stuff. You Colombians, uh, I don't know. You cool, but y'all Colombians? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even. <laughs> I gotta We're be, good people. I gotta, I gotta be mindful now because my daughter is Colombian. So, you know, y'all good know. people. Y'all good people. Some of y'all. We're going to leave it like that. We're going to leave it at that. But yeah, I, I find it really important to like create something. You know, not just for yourself, but something to give back to other people. Like you say, your foundation, you know, it's not just for the kids, but it's just more to give back. And that's how I feel, too. It's like it's all about giving back everything that we do, everything that we go through. You know, it's some form of way we can use that to give back to someone else to help them. You know, Yeah, yeah, yeah. are you interested in playing overseas basketball one day? I wish someone would have told me. One year after college, I would receive my first pro gig. I wish someone would have told me that having an agent does not guarantee that you will get hired. I wish someone would have told me being cut from a team because after 10 years in this game, everyone gets cut from a team. Now, after traveling from over 17 different countries and winning up to seven championships in my pro career, I've put together the six most important traits any player needs before starting their career. So go ahead and grab that ebook and get all the information you need today to start your career. Now you can't say no one didn't let you know. So go ahead, grab that ebook and get started so you can become the pro one day. Let's go. Well, I, I started my college career in a junior college. I went to Northeastern Oklahoma a and in Miami, Oklahoma. Then I I had two great years there. Memories How and basketball wise was amazing. How did they find you? Well, uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think <laughs> I nobody has asked me before that. Ooh, it was like a <laughs> How you, like a crooked call phone. I don't know how you say it. Like, un telefono roto. Telefono roto. Uh, let me explain. So, uh, some Colombian player that was in the NEO team 2012, 2013, like, she contacted Hansel Atencia's mom. You know the point guard of the national team, Hansel? Yeah, oh, the, you know the light Hansel? skin, the light skin yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the light skin guy, yeah. So this lady contacted me and told me that, hey, you wanted to play. But for the other side, another friend, Colombian friend, Jean Paul Mejia, who was in NEO also, like, also contacted me and said, like, hey, you want to play? Like, coach is looking for foreign players. Like, this is the school. It's a small school, but it could be a good opportunity. I say, I say to both of them, like, yes, I'm going. <laughs> if, like, even before asking my mom, like, she knew. I was in my, in my second year of uh, of a school dentist uh-huh. and I say yes I'm out I'm, I'm out. out yeah yeah I'm out <laughs> like that was my childhood dream uh, I don't know like I feel I always feel inside of me like it was gonna happen mm-hmm. I didn't know how because it was really hard for women to mm. even a Colombian women to even get visible for a, an American coach Right. So it was like a crooked phone because like somebody told somebody that people told me that people, you know, six degrees like, of separation. I was like, it, yeah, and I, and I know it's a really it was by the time it was a really big opportunity like for somebody from my country to get that chance. Mm-hmm. So my mom knew that also, and you know, I mean, she always supported me yeah. in everything. So I was in my second year of a school dentist. And she said, no, you have to go. Right. Like, it was, it's your dream. 
It might only pass the, the train one time, and you have to leave. Go. I open your wings and go. And she always mm. encouraged me to, to, you know, to, to, to this dream also. And that's how I get into, into junior college, into NEO. And then a year later, my mom passed away. Mm-hmm. Not even a year later, but at the end of that year, like in April, like before the, the school Yeah, was I, I over. remember. I reached out to you, didn't yeah. I? I sent you a message during that time. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I bet you did. Yeah, and then, well, I, I, I was there in September, my, in, in August. My grandma passed away in November. Then my mom passed away in April. And that year was pretty tough because five months later, after my mom was 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 gone, one of my uncles passed away too. So it was oh a pretty tough year, man. And many people in my family, after my mom passed away, like they talk like, she's not gonna come back. Like, but I, I was saying like, I'm just coming back for my mom's funeral. I have to go back and end up, and end my 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 school year, my classes, everything, my exams, everything. Like, I couldn't believe, like, they think that. You're just going to quit? They thought you were going to quit? By, by that day, I knew, like, that was my, my escape. Right. I mean, I had had my four years of school, like, just I, just, I only had to play basketball and be good at the school. Like, as easy as that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, it, it's not easy. <laughs> you know I what know, I'm saying? I know what you're saying. So I knew my mom was... <laughs> feeling just safe or good like just thinking like she's gonna be good like the next four years at least because she have an education and she's gonna be playing basketball and pursuing her dreams so that was my mindset right so after my mom passed away i finished my 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 sophomore year i graduate and i transferred to louisiana tech it's a, a D1 school in louisiana uh, we were in the conference usa mm. I had I had another good option to go, but um, I think by the time I thought it was a good a good decision for me to go there, but I think I precipitate myself just for the fact I wanted to go at D one school. Explain. And maybe I could develop myself in a D two school, but I guess I had to go through that year. Because now it was an awful year, I don't know. Like, it was an awful year. I was so depressed because things didn't go as I wanted. Uh-huh. So on the I court. started mixing. Yeah, on the court. On the court, yeah. I was good at classes, though. <laughs> I was a good student. But it just, they didn't play me. And it, it wasn't like I did something wrong. Or I was, it just, their decision, mm-hmm. they only play eight players in the whole year and things. Every every week got worse for me. Like I was so depressed and coaches. I feel I don't even want to talk about these coaches, but they I don't know. It was a tough year for me. Thanks God, like the assistant coaches, they were there for me mm-hmm. and they were encouraged me because I was really depressed because I started mixing my mom's uh, mm-hmm. dead with with the year I was having, with, I wasn't playing basketball, I was alone, I was sad, and a bad mix of so many things that was like, just taking me, driving me crazy. Right. I was so depressed. Uh, what I, like, I say, I look back and I say, Maria, good job. I never stopped working out. Mm-hmm. I never stopped. Uh, I, I didn't give up on my, on my classes. On my, I had good grades. Right. I was doing extra gym. I was going extra to shoot. The things I could control. Yeah, of I mean, course, of course, of course. It was, it was just like that. So by the end of the year, I just tell the coaches, like, like hey, I'm, 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 I'm gone. I, I don't want to be here next year. I, uh, my dreams are others. I know this is a good school, and I know this is a big school. I, we are in a good conference, talking about basketball-wise, but it's just not going to work for me here. Mm-hmm. And I need to find happiness in basketball again. I need to find myself in, in the game of basketball again. 
And I just transferred to uh, Angel State uh, D2 school in, in Texas. And it was the best decision. Like, yeah. Coach Shippy just opened her arms, in, like, everything. Like, she was my friend. She was my coach. She was my, my encourage. Like, she was really good with me. Like, she recruited me from my freshman year. Uh-huh. So she knew all my transition. She knew all about my mom. She knew all about... And I guess when, when I decided to go to school, I just got blind by the fact that I wanted, I wanted to go to a D1. School. Everybody gets that so mixed up. The D1. Got to go D1. It's got to be yeah. the biggest. That, and sometimes we don't look at what's best for us, but we look at what's the biggest thing, the, the shiny, like going D1. But... Sometimes that's not always the best situation, but at least she was there for you and, you know, still showed her support by still bringing you on. And like you said, it was the best decision for yeah. you. Yeah, I, and I was even good at everything around, like the place I was staying, like the money they were, the school was helping us, like the teammates, the team was really good. And I recovered my confidence. I recovered my happiness in the game. Man, it was just a total different thing, and I kept, I, I, it was myself again, like right. playing basketball. I was so nervous in, in tech, like I was traveling with the ball, I was just, I was, I was terrible, you know, it was a whole, awful year, awful year. Man, when you're not, co- when your mind is not there, and I feel like every basketball player has those moments where they'd be like, man, I suck like i just can't play right now as good as you yeah, are like everybody if you every basketball player has had that moment it's just like man yeah, i but, suck yes but the important thing that i feel like i learned from my year at tech was man like I got tougher, I guess mm. i mean i i say now it was an awful year but i guess it taught me a lot uh-huh. A lot, a lot, a lot of things that it made me became a better player, a better person. It made me grow. Um, my my last year at college, I enjoyed so much. I after after I was done with school and everything, I knew I had numbers. I knew I had something that you know to help me to pursue the last one mm-hmm. dream that be a pro player. I got a question. So. That time at t- when you're at Tech, compare that to the conversation we had when we talked not too long ago. Yeah. Do you feel like that situation that you had there is something that helped you deal with this situation that you had? It looked like you're playing pretty yeah. good now, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I was, I told you how, mm-hmm. uh, how, I, how, I, how I, I was feeling and, man, I just... I just, one thing one coach told me when I was in college is like, the only thing you only put your head down is to work there. Eh? Mm. So I, I did that pretty much here too. I just say like, okay, it's, it's about the stuff I, I, I told you, but I can't control that. Right. The only thing I can control is being in shape, is being mm, clear in my mind, is being happy with myself. And I just focus on that and think of better. Yeah. It looked, I mean, it looked better. Yeah. And we on the road to play the final four next weekend. Next weekend? So, yeah. It's, it's going to be Neuquén, the South Down. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's, I'm happy, Leia. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a, a championship this year, too, in Colombia. I won this, we won the championship in Bucaramanga with the, oh, okay. with, with the Bucaramanga team. So... I mean, it feels good. I, I, I hope I, I start like a, a, a streak like you. Ah. <laughs> Champions is in a row. <laughs> I hope you get that too. Um, so tell me a little bit about the differences from like playing in Colombia. Or just tell me one of the biggest differences from playing from in America and playing in like foreign countries, you know? Yeah, I, I admire so much the the process, like the mindset that the that college uh, works. Like it's it's totally different. Like I feel I was lucky 
uh, to leave my transition from uh, like a regular player, college player, and a pro player. Because, like, honestly, you, you became a pro, play, a pro, pro player in, in college. Mm -hmm. Like, the way that you have a preseason, like, the way how you work during the season and the way how you work in, in postseason. Mm -hmm. Like, it makes you better, better, and really makes you ahead of so many people of your age around the world. Of course. Because that experience is, is really something that I believe many countries have to... That. To look up and say like, hey, and copy mm -hmm. because it's working, it's working, it works. And I, I guess the biggest transition is like the difference is like, well, uh, a season, like teams in during the season works differently. Like they don't have maybe the money or the time to spend to create a process like that or a long process, four-year process. And I mean. It's different. The basketball in the U.S. is more faster. It's more like skills. It's more like, you know, mm -hmm. it, when I play in Europe, the basketball was slower. It was um, very, like, um, technical, I guess. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know if well, I... you can use technical. Well, but... Yeah, you can say technical. Yeah. And, but yeah, but in DA, if you are good, and you are good. I have seen me like they were really, really freaking good. <laughs> and they can resolve the game, and they, you know, they just give them the ball and they just do their part and they, they trust you also on your stuff. But it's a, a, a tough basketball, too. Europe is a tough basketball, too. And here in, in Latin America, I, I feel it's more like European basketball, I feel. In Europe, expecting some difference in in the process and in the leagues, in the, the importance of the leagues, but uh, we play more technical and yeah. But the definitely the the basketball in the U.S. is more quicker, is more tougher, is more, you know. Yeah, like, it's different, but I feel it, they're they're both good, you know. I feel like that's because well, like in America, everybody's. They just got, they have all the skills. They jump high, they can, they're faster. And I feel like that's a problem, not a problem, but that's why sometimes a lot of guys in America don't adjust to playing overseas because mm -hmm. you do have to like slow the game down sometimes and be more technical because not everybody can run and jump as fast as you can. And they're not going to just give you the ball and say, hey, go score 30. Resolve. Every single time you have to work this system and some guys don't know how to really work the system because they're just so used to just running and jumping and dunking and playing crazy, really, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So you say you played in Europe. What else places um, like in your whole career? What have been the places that you've played in like uh, so far? Well, uh, in my whole career. <laughs> I play in Colombia. I had the opportunity to play a minor league, like a 16, 17 years old league in Australia mm -hmm. because I went for like an international student uh, exchange mm -hmm. when I was 16, 17 years old. So I was just going for to learn English, but I, you know, six months without playing basketball, I had to look somewhere to play. <laughs> so I found this team in, in Melbourne Tigers. And I just played okay. the, like the local league, like the kids league. Like it was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. It taught me a lot too, and it was a nice experience. Um, after I played in the U.S., and my first my first experience as a pro was in Spain in the Liga Femenina dos in the League Two in Spain. Then I um, I finished the season there. Then I signed in Romania. Okay. I played in Romania like a few months. Uh, it was a nice experience too. I did good numbers too, but uh, I I had to go home before the year was done because some trouble with the papers they didn't want to make. It wasn't my fault. And so I get back to Colombia and this year I went to Mexico to play okay. the league, the, the pro league. And I finished the league there. We end up in the playoff. We lost in the playoff, and so I went home. The Colombian league was about to start, so I say, why not? 
Why not? I wanted to play like the options were good, like the team had a good sponsor. We had a good team, so I say like it must be nice. So I What's played the team? in the Colombian League, Ormigas, Ormigas. What city? Bucaramanga. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was I just, it was just perfect. I was playing for my hometown. <laughs> it was just so perfect for me, so I took it. And I mean, that was uh, over the summer, so oh, you know, yeah. no other leagues were, were playing. And after I, fin- after I was done there, we were champions. I was the top scorer and I was the MVP. You always a scorer. And... You always been a scorer. <laughs> no. <laughs> So after that, I just stayed home for uh, two months, maybe two months and a half, just working on my brand, just preparing myself for what's, what was going next. I didn't know I was coming to Argentina. Uh, we were working other things with my agent, but uh, that, that didn't work out. So, so uh, it appears this opportunity. So I took it. I said, Argentina is a good league. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a long league, so I'm going to have work until May, April. So I'm happy really to be here. Uh, I feel like every experience uh, teaches you. I feel like you're still learning as, Always. You, as you're GR Wadding Pro. Yeah, I, I know. I'm year so nine. I just, yeah. Embrace, I embrace the whole experience. Nothing is holding me back. And I'm pretty good right now at this point of my life. Yeah. Um, I know you're not with uh, Chiki. No more. No. <laughs> oh, no. Are we friends now, though? After many years, we're friends now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, how, like, since you do, because for me, that's probably been one of the biggest, like, I would say difficulties is dealing with, like, mm-hmm. relationships in this life. <laughs> we're too man we're too I just oh my god uh, so, so uh, that's why I wanted to ask you I think from, I'm single a week ago I got really? to, I become single a week ago yeah oh my god <laughs> I feel like that part of the game for like I, I want to ask from like a female um, side of it because I know from just me and even like some of my friends that have like been in the game a long time relationships is just like the hardest thing they just don't work they just it's just hard and it's like yeah it's it's hard it's hard to find somebody who really understand our profession who really understand like where well, man we are not just running like with a ball <laughs> in our hands like it's not just like that like it's tough it's, it's every day <laughs> we have to wake up and be the ber- best version of ourselves, just work hard, mm-hmm. work harder because we are the foragings. I mean, I feel, I don't know if the relationships are with, like for us, because we are every season in different countries, uh-huh. but if we, if somebody like want to be with us, that like, they gotta understand like our whole life and understand that we, we, we may be gonna be apart. We need somebody who, who can trust, you know, Trust us, like, no, no, somebody insecure, no, somebody like, no, like, this, this is the life we choose as yeah, the other man. person choose their life, like, we don't need nobody who come here to our house and tell us and changes the rules. Right. I like, know we've been work, working really hard for this, like, for many years before that person, before you even know. Right. And I feel they gotta respect that part. And if you can find nobody like who can trust you, who can understand like the life we, we are on, like I think it's better to stay single. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I t- in two, well, at the end of the year, the first January first, I turned thirty three, and I'm just, I ain't even gonna lie. I'm looking for love. Like I just need someone. Yeah. Um, just I'm just tired of just, but it's too hard. Like you said, I don't live mm-hmm. in the state. I'm gone eight nine months out of the time, and then I'm in this country, and then I might not see you for six months, and then you know you might see me for a month. And as much as the other person said they want to be with you, and they understand. 
you don't stuck. understand until you actually I'm gone for six months at a time. You know, and you're saying, oh, I understand. No, you don't really understand. You know, it's very tough. And I feel like it's like, how do I turn away from my purpose of what I, like you said, I work so hard for this every single day, all the time. My head down, I'm grinding. It's going to make a better life for me. You know, this is like, not even just my career, but then like my business comes from this and what I create mm -hmm. comes from this and when we are not playing, we get so depressed and it's like a, a huge part of us that you just can't take away. How do I substitute that, you know, for the, whoever I'm with? And they understand that in majority of the times, I like, okay, like with my relationship with um, Soki at the time, you know, she was in a different mm -hmm. country. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, That's what I want to say. My mom was at his marriage. <laughs> she testified over there. She was, she was right there. I'm not even going to bring her up. Oh my yeah. God. Anyways, but it's just like you meet people from other countries and I feel like that's just been the hardest for me because almost every relationship I've had, even after her, was someone from a different country. And it never works out because I live in a different country. You know, it's not like I'm well, OK when I'm done, I'm coming home. But your home is not my home, you know, and even mm -hmm. more so for me now, I have a daughter. So I'm not going to go. The first thing to do is going to go see you. I'm going to go to my home to go see my daughter. And, you know, I already spent seven months away and I got probably three months left before I got to go again. Majority of that time is going to be with her, you know. So I feel like that relationship. Oh, man, that's it. Anyways. So moving yeah, on. we don't even bring that. Topic. <laughs> like, no, I don't even think about that. I think, I think but for me, like, I'm just, I'm in my third year. So I'm just, man, I'm. I haven't been single in a while. Huh? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happened then. Uh, I wish you luck. That's all I can say. <laughs> I wish you luck. So um, one thing I always wonder, like, what are some of the, like, difficulties it takes for, like, female basketball players overseas? Like, what are some of the difficulties that you face with being, like, a basketball player and traveling, you know? Because I'm pretty sure this is a different situation like us guys you know they might not try us as yeah, much they mm -hmm, they like i feel like i can say like we uh, like kim so it's a good club like they have me i mean they they really treat us good but i feel the uh like the wage gap i feel i feel like mm. the treatment that we get from institution as a women is totally different like, it's nothing different like the world we live in, uh, talking about that. Like, the wage gap is huge, starting from that. How huge? We are, we are <laughs> under, <laughs> under value. Like, for real, like, we, we do the same as you. We left the country for nine years, for nine but, months, yeah. for, you know, like, it's the same. But, like, really, really, like, the wage gap between guys and women in sports is or at least in basketball, it's really, it's really big. And the treatment, like, guys, um, I don't know. It's just small things, but I feel you understand, like... What are the small things? That's what I want to know. I like, know. for example, like, the guys' team has a psychologist, high, like, a two kines, like, stuff, like, we only have one, like, kinesiologist, like, uh -huh. like, kine, you know? And, I mean, it's... Like, like, it's like they have us there because they had to have a women's team. You don't feel appreciated. Is, you don't feel appreciated. Yeah, yeah, that, that too, that too. And I feel that I face this so much in my country and between my friends too. Like, they, they really think still, like, I'm just playing to, I'm, I mean, I'm just still playing to be, like, the pro player, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I'm just, Maria, when are you going to start... Like man, I'm not gonna stop. I already, I'm a pro player now. Mm -hmm. Like stop playing with me. Like, mm -hmm. like what? Like you don't believe in me? You don't believe like I'm a pro player because I'm a girl? Because what? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm always 
I don't need to, you know, to nobody to tell me what I am. I right. know what I am. Right. I know, I know what I have to do to be, like, to be, to be good at my sport and my, I'm a, yeah. at this thing. So, it's yeah. Talking about like something I face is is that like it's really, I mean, I I yeah, now I find it like pointless to you know fight with boys or with friends who really don't appreciate or don't understand or don't believe in in my process in this process oh, what, I, what I have done to be here right like so many people appear now because right now they you know yeah she she did she did it oh, mm -hmm. but when I was in the process in college many people ghost from me like many people just laugh at my process laugh at my bad situation and maybe didn't think that I could I could make it mm -hmm. so I guess I knew that but I never never listened to that because I knew I knew the way to my process. I was like an tunnel vision. Right. My, my college career was like a tunnel vision because it was really tough for me. After I lost my mom, my life changed. Okay. I think you, you see how my mom was with me. Mm -hmm. like, everything like I had, like she gave me everything. She gave me all the love I need, all, all the understand, understanding, all the, you know, she was yeah. a man lady. Like, and I don't have dad, I don't have brother and sister. So it was really tough to lose her. But she always gave me an education that inspired me to just open my wings and fly. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing my whole life. That's what I, that was my, like my talk when I was in college. I said like, man, I'm here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. Like I just, I just gotta go follow the steps. I like, am mm -hmm. on the right path. And I just, I'm on the right path. Like I just gotta just do what I have to do. Right. And that's what I did. All right. I, I, I definitely understand you on that because you know, for me, um, last year I lost my my father. You know, playing overseas, and I had to leave and go bury him. I couldn't even imagine, especially like during your age. At least I'm, I was 31, you know, it, even though it don't matter. When you lose them, you lose them. But mm -hmm. for you to see how far that you came from that situation to here, like, man, it's, it, it's amazing. You know, I'm so proud of you, you know, to see how far you've come, see how you keep going, how you keep doing your thing. Because I know how it is to be trying to pursue your dreams and then have the closest people from, um, to you get taken away and then you still, and then everybody's doubting you and telling you that you, oh, I'm waiting for you. I figured you would quit, you know, but the hell with them, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're still here, still grinding, exactly. still, still doing your thing, man. So we always got to do it for ourselves. Like you said, the tunnel of vision, doing it for ourselves, you know, I always believe in you. But the first time, I was like, yeah, she got it. She gone, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm very glad. I'm very, very proud of you. I'm very, I'm glad. I don't know we ain't never going to get to see each other because I'm down here and you were, uh, but at least we're in the same country again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, my last question I believe I asked is like, what is your, what is your ultimate goal? Like when you're done with the basketball, you know, long time from now, but when you're done like, what is the goal? Like, what is the, like, okay, I've done everything that I was supposed to do. What does that look like to you? Like, what is that? What do you see? I imagine, I imagine um, finishing my basketball career, like, at 30 something. By that time, I want to have all my, my business settled, like, all my mm -hmm. brand settled. Like, it's not, it's not only a, a close brand. I want like something real. I want to, I, I have many projects. I really like this uh, social service. And I know so many, I so many talent in my town that they just, people in Colombia don't invest in sports, like mm -hmm. how they should. I, so many kids that don't have the privilege that I had just get loose in the, in the teenage, in the teenage, the teenage age, like teenage fourteen, age. 16, yeah, yeah teenage, teenager age. So I want to 
help. I mean, I have a whole project, but something like COVID did, like we not only basketball, but other sports and mm-hmm. help people get through through college in my country to get to college uh, international. Like just just be that help that I always look to like hope to find when I was starting this process. Right. I guess. Man, I, I believe in God in all his reasons. Like they put me in all this 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 process and as I tell you it's, it was hard to find for me a Colombian woman, a sport a Colombian girl from Colombia to like nobody scouted me, like in my under fifteen South American, like the process was over there, was cut there, we didn't go to the next stage, so we we didn't get to scout to watch us or something like that. So I wanna, I wanna, I wanna help this community. I like to work with this community, and I believe that I, I want, I want them to believe them that this is a lifestyle that mm. you can find, like door openings, like change your life. Right. To be in a sport, man. To be in the sport. So that's my dream. I end up like not finishing my basketball and say like, hey, the hell, no more basketball for me. No, I wanted to be involved with the communities. I wanted to be to help more people to chase the dream I had to. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, that's great, man. And I feel like we're on our way because if we have that thought now, you know, because I I find and I find that so hard to believe because when I first saw you, I was like, dang, she must be getting. Recruited by somebody because you was just too good, you know, but you you don't really know like it, Nobody's really looking and nobody's really helping, you know, because and I bet it happens in many countries that are undervalued Yeah, that's the word. Very talented. Yeah Undervalued. So if you have one thing that you could tell like a young a young athlete a young a teenager, 14, 15, she want to play one day. What's one, one piece of advice you can give her right now so she can, like, okay, she can believe that she can do exactly what she what you've done? It it sounds like like uh, everybody says, but uh, don't stop dreaming. Mm-hmm. Don't stop working towards that dream. I mean, you can be a teenager and have a normal uh, life. Like, you can go to parties, you can be with friends. I mean, you gotta be good in the school. You gotta be a normal people, but always focus on what really wanted, uh, what really want, to, like you want for your future. Mm-hmm. Like you know me, I, I was, I was a normal kid, but I always was like working out. And mm-hmm. I guess uh, I build more character in college, mm-hmm. like more, more. This is stuff I told you, like work extra and all that. But I mean. I always had that dream in my heart, in my head. Even when I was studying dentistry, that year before my offer came, that uh, December 31st, I, man, I was eating my my grapes. You know, we eat grapes for <laughs> for wishes. And oh yeah, I, said, I forgot about I said, that. Like, yeah, <laughs> so I say, man, God, this is the year, man. I'm gonna be 19 this year. I gotta go. I, this, this is gonna be the year, and. I never, as I told you at the beginning, like I always felt that it was going to happen. I always had that faith. I always had uh, that in mind. That was my focus. And it happened. It, it, I don't know. It, it, it happened. So other thing important is to study, I guess. And basketball can stop tomorrow. Like you know an injury, you know nothing, but you have to have something else like education mm-hmm. is something important it's something that you have to have like I need your high school degree go to college like it just not only for for some for for have some title it's all the things you learn You're right in in university all the people you met all the people you know the all this the stuff you they they show you right. that you might on your own you're not gonna look at so it's the whole process what you have to enjoy is the whole process. What really, what really matters. What really, I mean, we talking about the end, the whatever. But it's really the process. What teach you every day. Right. So, 
Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process, man. I appreciate you coming on. It was great to talk to you. Don't let it be another seven years before we talk to I know. each other. Yeah, that's <laughs> you right. Know? And I hope you. I uh, wish. I'm I... glad we can't communicate now, though. Right. Yeah, at least we can't communicate now. Right, yeah. we can. <laughs> um, when is y'all games? When is the game you say for the final four? Well, uh, we play this uh, Friday and Sar Friday and Saturday. If we win on Friday, we play the final Saturday. Um, These are four teams. Montmartre from Cordova, I think they're from. Mm -hmm. Neuquén, that's Union Pacifico. That's our first game. And Obras from Buenos Aires. Obras, yeah, I know Obras. Obras. How do you feel? You think y'all going to do it? You think y'all going to win? In Kimsa. Okay. We're going to go for that trophy. What did you say? You think y'all going to win it? Yeah, I think we... we... I trust my team. We got a good team. We got a, a good staff. We got a good environment. Like, man, the only thing is, like, I, th I think they're going to say that by boss. It's like 18 hours. It's crazy, but <laughs> I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, yeah, the whole team is really high. The, the whole team really wants to, to get that, that mid-season uh, mid trophy because that's, that, that would be amazing for next year for everybody because we're going to have a... Yeah. Uh, we're gonna play the South American League, so it must be nice. All right, man. I hope y'all get it too. I'm gonna be watching. I got the the basketball pass. Yeah. I'm gonna be watching, man. All bring right. home that trophy. I want it. I'll bring home that trophy, man. So yes, yes. <laughs> it was great yeah. talking to you. I'm glad I got you on, and we'll keep in contact. First, tell everybody where they can find you, your brand, so they can know where to go and check out your stuff. And all that. Let, them, let people know where they can find you. Okay, my personal uh, Instagram is Panchira Panchita D Panchita D six twenty two, Panchira D six twenty two, and my brand uh, profile is Delgado Suarez six twenty two. So these are my two profiles. I personally, it's me who is responding. So I mean. Reach out. That's her, my <laughs> social media. I, I got mean, it. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have all her links inside of my bio on my YouTube, on my podcast, so y'all can go check her out. Pancha, thank you. We'll keep in touch. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe on our YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you listen to your podcast. I greatly appreciate it.